Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. So I want a show of hands of everyone at this table who is racist. Oh my God. For me, race has never really been a thing. I've always thought of myself as being like kind of woke. I'm blinded to color, like it doesn't faze me at all. When we bleed, we bleed red. Because he was a white male, he was a victim of reverse racism. I understand you have issues with a skin color, but I don't believe that's our future. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would trade places with a black person in this society. Raise your hand. Fascinating stuff. The women behind it, none other than Regina Jackson and Syrah Rao. Thank you both for joining us on Indisputable. How are you? Good. Good, thank you. Glad to be here. All right, this is some fascinating stuff. Deconstructing Karen, a documentary in 2022. It highlighted some nuances, but it also provided some clarity. And I also think you made some breakthroughs here. So let me start with you, Regina. Why was this an important thing to do? Well, you know, I've been black for a very long time. <laughs> I've been through it. I've been through the civil rights movement. I've been through everything that people from my generation go through. And nothing much has changed. Um, and then we bring in uh, President Trump and it gets worse. So the battle is never over. You know, I can never sit back and say, okay. I've made it and I have a good life, I have a good education, good job, so does my husband. But until my whole community has the same opportunities that I have, the fight's not over. Uh, Sarah, you are uh, an attorney by training. And uh, that means I'm in law school currently, so you know. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, pray for me. Bless uh, you, I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it teaches you to, to look at things differently. You actually have to deconstruct based on a really analytical core. Um, did you utilize some of that with, with the Karenicity that we saw? And, <laughs> and what was some of the um, elements that surprised you from this documentary? You know, I think my life as a South Asian woman has prepared me for the Karenicity, Karenosity, mm -hmm. whatever you wanna say, because um, White women have been white women my whole life. And, you know, our book, we have a best selling book called White Women Everything You Already Know About Your Own Racism and How to Do Better. They know, they've known their whole lives, just like we black and brown people know. So I feel like just my regular life, not just being a lawyer by training, has trained me to deal with them because they, they, they do the same thing. It's, it's every dinner, we really see the same thing. We've done so many dinners at this point, and it's defensiveness, it's gaslighting, it's tone policing, it's denial, denial, denial. We see it every time. It doesn't matter if it's London or Fort Lauderdale, it's it's yeah. the same. Yeah, uh, Regina, the race to dinner dynamic, right? Um, sought to you know, create an opportunity for people to just talk. Uh, nothing scripted, authentic uh, conversation, right? You, you throw a little wine in there, uh, you start getting even more authentic conversation. One of the dynamics for me that still strikes me as significantly ironic. Is this, and I want I want you to tell us how you feel. When a person will say racism does not exist, or America is not a racist country, etc., and then turn around and also say that they or somebody they know who's white has experienced racism, they call it reverse racism. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, reverse racism does not exist. What reverse racism is white people getting their feelings hurt because they've always been privileged. And now that we are looking for equality and equity, their feelings are hurt. That's all that is, Race, reverse racism is not a thing. Do you think you reach some um, Karens, so-called, in this um, race to dinner or highlighting some of the conversations? Did you have some significant breakthrough? I think we have. 
we've got women, we have a community online, and we've got white women who are committed to being in that community, to talking, we have discussions, to talking about racism, and to stopping it when they see it and hear it. And that's my ask. Quit pretending like you don't see. We know you see, we know you know, stop it. Very well said. Um, Syra, uh, naturally, individuals pretty much contextualize experiences based on their own lens. Uh, and when they are challenged that maybe their experience is not the experience of everyone else, uh, they can either revert back to a very selfish point of view or consider that other people actually know how they are treated and how their experience has impacted them. Uh, in the process of this, did you see individuals, these Karens, start coming to that realization that their experience may be authentic, but it doesn't mean that it is the only experience that others have? That's a great question, and the answer is yes. So further to what Regina was saying in terms of do we see white women having sort of a catharsis or a change? Yeah, it happens in all sorts of different ways. It, it, as Regina noted in our online community, but even at the dinners themselves, you know, like we had a white woman say not too long ago outside of New York City, in in front of people, in front of her peers, how her daughter, who's white, they live in an apartment building. Her best friend, they're seven, okay. Her best friend spending the night at her house. She's black, and this white woman hears this kid's footsteps in the middle of the night. And she said, the first thing that comes to mind is not, is she okay? Is this friend, best friend of my daughter okay? But is she stealing from me? Mm. So she said that out loud. That's one of many things that we've heard. But once you have, you say that out loud, it becomes real and you actually have to deal with it. And hopefully you're not gonna do it again. Hopefully it changes you know, something within you. So that's sort of like the, the self realization. Yeah, sure. I mean, Regina and I talk often about our experiences. And sometimes there is denialism, like, oh, are you sure you didn't read into that? That, you know, that happens to me too. That's not racism. But more often than not, the women who show up at these dinners are self identifying. They've come to the table. We haven't brought them in kicking and screaming and clubbing them over the head, even though that's what Fox News says about us essentially, that we've like drugged these women and, and brought them to the table. They come on their own volition and they want to listen and learn and unlearn. And they'll be like, wow, hadn't thought about that before. White people live in cocoons, they live in white cocoons. And sometimes it's the first time they've actually had a real conversation with a black woman and an Asian woman. You make a great point about acknowledgement. I typically say to my college students, you cannot obtain transformation without acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is required for transformation. Regina, I want to ask you this question about the transformation. But there's a prerequisite because everybody doesn't transform. Everybody will not see it. People will walk away believing they have actually been you know, more empowered in their original belief. What makes the difference? What is the difference between a Karen who says, I'm going to keep Karen in, in these streets, <laughs> and one who says, I have seen the woes of my way and I'm going to transform? What's the difference maker? I think it is people who have the emotional intelligence to look inside and say, do the analysis within your own internal being and say, I need to change things here. And that is very important because I believe we all know right from wrong. We know some of us choose to say, okay, what I've been doing is wrong and I need to make some changes. And then some people doesn't. But that comes from acknowledging that you were wrong or you need to learn or you need to grow. So if you want to continue to grow, you acknowledge thing and you work on yourself. You do the inner work. Can yeah. I add? Can I add one thing to that? Absolutely. Actually, um, you know, white supremacy is killing everybody, including white people. That's right. And if you don't see that in 2023 with the climate catastrophe, we, we're experiencing our first extinction summer. If you don't see that with guns, we're up to two mass shootings a day. Guns are white supremacy. The Second Amendment is white supremacy. Climate catastrophe is white supremacy colonialism. So what we're also seeing is there are white people who finally have recognized 
that white supremacy and the toxic whiteness living within themselves is killing them and killing their kids and killing humanity. And they want to save themselves, they wanna save their kids, they wanna save humanity. This is not an allyship situation, this is accomplice behavior. Right. Like we need to save ourselves and we are seeing that more and more now. White people finally waking up to the fact that white supremacy doesn't end well for anybody. We're all connected. We are all connected Absolutely. Uh, and there's a cause and effect relationship to everything that exists in this universe. Uh, and I wish people would get that part a little bit more inside of their soul. The interconnectedness of all things, Dr. King talked about it. Yep. Um, we've had uh, significant stories right here on Indisputable where if the officer would have just investigated the case that was against the black woman when the black woman was a victim, this other white woman would have never been killed because a killer was allowed to remain at large cause of no investigative prowess, cause and effect relationship. Well, mm -hmm. connected. Um, I do something not as dangerous as what you all do. Um, I work with gang members uh, to restore and remedy conflict and restore their self dignity. You all work with another gang called Karen. Karens have been known to be dangerous. Some Karens are extremely dangerous. You all are literally risking your life uh, in some instance because things could go foul. <laughs> what is the response if a Karen goes to the extreme? Or do you have a vetting protocol to make sure that you try to limit those types of violent interactions we've seen by those engaged in the psychological dynamic of Karenicity? Uh, and I'll start with you with that, uh, Regina. Um, you know, some things that we know we have to do is if we do these big events, we have to have security. You know, that's a given yeah. because of the work. At the dinners, we make the hosts responsible for interrupting the violence. For we have a crime room. The only rule we have is that white women cannot sit at the dinner table and cry because mm. when a white woman cries, a black man dies. So we don't allow that. So those are some of the things that we do to protect ourselves. Wow, that's a hell of a rule. <laughs> but I, so needed, so absolutely needed. because of the weaponization dynamic of it. Um, uh, to um, Ms. Rout, this is going to be an interesting, uh, you know, future, 2023 and beyond, because people are becoming more aware. Um, but what would you say uh, to those who are watching, and they have these experiences? With Karen, what's the best way to deconstruct the Karen in real time? In your opinion, well, that's a that's a great question because we're still working on that. We've had plenty. We've had to deconstruct a few Karens uh, this summer, in fact. Yeah. And I would say this honestly: our movie it, it's been really wild to us, Dr. Ritchie. And the movie came out last Thanksgiving, and our book came out November one of last year. And it's now I think it's seventh or eighth printing. It's a New York Times bestseller. People are responding to it, and and this is the reason we did it because Regina and I are only two people, and there's only so much we can scale with one dinner at a time. So we did this so we could kind of encapsulate every the book captures every single. White woman behavior, silence, perfectionism, what it's like to work with white women, microaggressions, all these things. I would ask, I mean, the, the greatest thing is black and brown women have said, thank you for writing this book. Thank you for doing this movie because I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel ungaslit. And so I'd say, please hand them our book. Tell them to watch our movie. It's 73 minutes long. You can download it on iTunes. And I think that's a great place to start. Well said. Now, I know this is against your protocol, not a normative request. But damn it, y'all got to get me one of these dinners. Just one. <laughs> All right, just one. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a person who confronts people with nonsense. I do it all the time in my life. I do it. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm not disrespectful. I just affirm myself and say, you know, that was not kind. And I just did it on an airplane. You know, we have this protocol, you wait for the people in front of you to get out, right? So this woman's behind me and I'm like, wait a minute, this young man needs to get out and I need to get out. And she says, well, he's waiting. I said, fine, I need to get out. And she said, well, I've got um, uh, something. Uh, she's having a, a breakdown. I said, I'm having one too. And she said, 
I need to get off of here. I said, we all need to get off of here. I said, you can be kind and wait your turn. I do it all the time. You know, we have a thing called anti-Karens on Indisputable where we highlight people that speak up. Uh, And here's the thing, if more individuals who would try to do what she did to you, if, if they knew that there would be somebody around to challenge that kind of action, you would see less of it. Yes, uh, because could. because we would, you know, in the societal construct, kind of self police uh, rudeness and bullies, uh, so that they're not so well. Let's just say proud. Um, ladies, thank you both. Thank, thank you. And we would love for you to come. We're going to be in New York City on October 27th, the Town Hall in Midtown Manhattan, and you're welcome to come join us up up on stage at our table there. Yeah, oh, that's going to be awesome. All right, so we gotta we gotta connect. I appreciate what you all do. We gotta bring you back. Uh, thank you. This is very important because I have seen the individuals who had their aha moment. That is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful dynamic, and you can see the the light in them once they get that. Point that moment, it's something had to happen. Humanity. It's about yeah. humanity. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you.